the dangers of high ethanol content in gas are very well known, particularly in applications that will be sitting in high heat or humidity for long periods of time. When fuel contains a high amount of ethanol, the gasoline will begin to decay because of the oxygen in the blend. Since the ethanol is hydroscopic, it absorbs water from the air, causing the fuel blend to separate, okay? And if you're one of those people who wait until your vehicle is literally on E, that means the likelihood of water getting into your engine is higher. So what happens if water gets into the engine? Well, if water gets into the engine, it could lead to very bad things, okay? If there's water in the engine, it could, it could lead to compression issues because there's no place for the water to go. Piston, piston rod will begin to bend and eventually break. And when piston, piston rod break, it'll likely take a chunk out of your engine on the way out. Most likely from the bottom of the engine, although it could happen from the top of the engine as well. And if water enters your engine, it can end up rusting out the parts like your differential, for example, and then you're really not going anywhere. So ethanol can be extremely damaging to small engines and high powered sports equipment, leading to corrosion of the engine and the fuel system. So simply put, what seems like a relatively simple purchase of ethanol containing fuel can literally ruin your engine. So this is all engines. This is, you know, lawnmowers, you know, um, everything, for example. But all gasoline is susceptible to changes due to weather and moisture content. But ethanol exacerbates this problem exponentially. A higher concentration of alcohol and gas, any gas, at the production facilities, the tankers traveling on the highway, the storage tanks at the gas stations, your car's reservoir, and even the red plastic can sitting on the floor in your garage means that the alcohol can grab and hold more water than straight gasoline. And if the water concentration gets too high, the alcohol in the water will drop out of suspension, literally turn the fuel into like this globally mess that your car's engine can't use. And it can happen at any stage of fuel transport, storage, or usage, even getting worse as it goes along. In short, ethanol increases the chances that your car will be damaged trying to process and burn contaminated gasoline. Okay. And so I found this little nugget um, a little bit earlier today when I was doing some research combing around and I found this, this house hearing committee um, on mid-level ethanol blends in the consumer and tech, uh, research. Okay, so this dates back to 2013. And this gentleman, the chairman of the subcommittee, Chris Stewart, was quoted saying recent research has found major problems resulting um, resulting from mid-ethanol blends. He's talking about E15, which is what they're putting in our gasoline today, right? Most people know about E10, they're 10% ethanol, but just recently they started putting more ethanol in the gasoline, and this apparently was a problem way back when in 2013. This research has identified negative impacts on engine durability, onboard diagnostics, fuel pumps, as well as non-road marine outdoor power equipment, snowmobile engines, et cetera, and it goes on. Additional research has shown that consumers are completely unaware, unaware of this drastic change, okay? So a, 2000, um, a 2012 study that I found earlier today as well by Auto Alliance uh, Group showed some cars, particularly the models between 2001 and 2009, showed internal engine damage as a result of using using ethanol fuel blends. Damage to the valves and valve seats was evident in some of the cars tested. One of the 16 cars in the auto line study failed emissions compliance standards, which means it emitted more pollution than allowed by the EPA. The study also showed that, start, that cars running E15 take a hit on gas mileage, okay? This is the crutch of the matter, where the rubber meets the road, what's taking the money out of your pocket. So they require more fuel to travel the same distance, which counteracts the benefits of diluting it in the first place. The Environmental Protection Agency said it would set the 2022 levels for corn-based ethanol blended into gasoline at 15 billion gallons. However, the summertime sales of higher ethanol gas in order to reduce record high gas prices doesn't come without a cost. 
Okay. Most gasoline sold in the U.S. is blended with 10% ethanol. At the current administration's directions, the EPA issued an emergency waiver to allow widespread sell of 15% ethanol blend that is usually prohibited between June 1st and September 15th because of concerns that it adds to smog in high temperatures. Okay. There was another study done, U.S. Automotive um, talking about ethanol blends, and this is back in 2010. U.S. auto and engine makers sued the Environmental Protection Agency um, back then uh, for allowing higher blends of ethanol for newer cars, saying it could confuse consumers at fuel pumps and lead to engine damage in older vehicles. The EPA's decision to allow E15 for some cars could confuse consumers. Okay. You can use consumers. It's damaging the vehicles, and people really don't know about it. They have no clue that it's happening. In fact, I just recently got into a conversation today um, with an individual. They have no clue that this is happening. They're just happy to see lower gas prices, right? And so um, less miles per gallon, guys, less miles per gallon. Ethanol contains about one-third less energy than gasoline, so Vehicles will typically go, typically go about three to four percent fewer miles per gallon on the E10 blend, and four to five percent fewer on E15 than on 100% gasoline. Ethanol's lower energy density leads to worse gas mileage, guys. Ethanol has about 25% less energy content than gasoline. So adding this substance dilutes the ability of the fuel to fire the pistons and gives your engine less bang for the buck. Consequently, due to this energy density reduction, there is a chance you will also get fewer miles per gallon. One test from an individual who compared ethanol-free gasoline versus gasoline containing 10% E10 said this about driving his 2008 Subaru Forester. Using pure gasoline instead of E10 boosted my MPG by 7% but reduce my miles per dollar or MPD by 4% due, the, due to the higher cost per gallon. His experiment showed that ethanol enhanced E10 fuel instead of the ethanol free fuel reduced his MPG by 6.2%. So this was, you know, he was driving the same route, same time he did this like huge controlled study. Um, it was a fascinating read. But he concluded the same thing that we're all coming um, to the conclusion of, and that is more ethanol increases miles per gallon and literally messes up your engine. So will 15% ethanol seriously cut your gas mileage? Yes, it does. It will. It has. You don't have to go far to hear folks complaining about how the current level of ethanol content on the gasoline has affected the gas mileage in their vehicles. Okay? Theoretically, if you were to run 100% pure ethanol, E100, in your vehicle, you'd expect to take a 33% hit on your gas mileage, guys. This is why Gobi is so important right now. Aside from the smoke and mirrors illusion that you're paying less at the pump with the increase in ethanol and the gasoline supply, also comes the increase in carbon deposit formation in the engine. Again, you're getting less miles per gallon. It's gumming up your engine to the point where if you don't do something, eventually you're just not gonna be able to go anywhere, right? Back to the horse and buggy you go, all right? So aspects of added ethanol, summary real quick, corrosion of traditional fuel system materials, possible adverse effect on deposit control performance, tendency to encounter intake valve sticking problems, and this is what really everyone cares about, reduce fuel economy, right? We all wanna save money at the pump. How much of a difference can there be between E10 fuel, which is in widespread use, although not warmly embraced, and E15 fuel? How much damage can be caused by that extra 5%? The evidence is compelling enough that in 2011, guys, several automaker, um, automakers said that owners of older cars running E15 were in danger of voiding their warranties. So how many older vehicles out there? that are pumping gas right now, they have no idea about the 15% ethanol in their fuel are gonna absolutely destroy their vehicles and they're gonna have, they're not gonna have any clue, okay? 
So Govery literally solves all of these problems for us. It has been reported that some people aren't seeing the same results as they once were using. Some of the uh, uh, Govery's fuel boosting tablets prior to the current administration's decision to raise the ethanol in the concrete fuel. And this is the exact reason why, okay? So as I have just described, the reason isn't the science behind organometallic chemistry, and, and it, that it simply doesn't work because it does. Otherwise, a Nobel Prize would not have been awarded. You see, the reason is again the increase in the ethanol, right? So don't shoot the messenger, all right? So here's the bottom line: those that cried out to the government that they should do something about record high gas prices this summer, we all got hoodwinked. It's the classic Kansas City shuffle bait and switch, you guys. And here's a quote from Ronald Reagan: "The most terrifying words in the English language are." I'm here from the government and I'm here to help. Okay, we know what happens. Anytime, you know, Big Brother gets involved with anything, it's just not a good thing. Don't you think it's time to take control of your own path, your own destiny, your own financial future, as I did? This is one of the best decisions, business decisions I ever made in my life. You are the answer you've been looking for. Only big oil loses here, you guys. The big pursuit of big oil, have long allowed the richest elite powerful sway over the masses and the ability to craft a world and workforce that bends to their very needs. This truth has never changed, you guys. These lobbyists and things like that. So we do not have control over any of that. What we do have control over, okay, is what we put in our in our engine, what we put in our gas tank. Okay. And so this is why Gobi is so important. Gobi dual boosting catalysts are arguably the single most effective means in increasing engine power, improving fuel efficiency, decreasing diesel engine emission, and extending the life of your expensive engine, all with an attached reward program. Gobi members have reported up to 15 to 20% more miles per gallon on average. Okay, One tablet treats 15 to 20 gallons of gasoline or diesel. And Gobi is now registered with the EPA with over 650 million miles tested with this technology. So you can feel safe and confident that it absolutely will not hurt your engine. Not one lawsuit has ever been brought against this type of technology, okay? Our formula was developed by Nobel Prize winning chemists and has been shown in tests to reduce harmful emissions by an average of 40%. So you can feel good about helping the environment. And it boosts octane levels by five points, providing further savings for vehicles re requiring premium fuel. So there's huge savings right there. My wife drives a souped up SS Chevy Camaro that requires premium fuel. We're putting regular gasoline in it and we're getting better boost in power performance using the fuel boosting catalyst than we were just uh, pumping regular, uh, or excuse me, pumping premium fuel prior to using the tablets. So it's, it's a huge difference, guys, um, in octane levels and power and boosting power and performance. That's one of the first things I noticed. Okay, and so you've got three options here. Okay, you've got three options here. You can become a retail customer. So this again, this product literally costs you money not to use. Okay, um, and you can subscribe and save even more money. Or you can become a promoter and help others save money and get paid doing it. It's literally a no-brainer. One of the only companies I've ever been involved with that has this type of dynamic to it, you guys. Um, you're helping people save money at the pump. They can in turn take that money, hundreds of dollars of savings every month, and go buy organic groceries or go, go spend money on supplements they need for their health or you know, I say that because that's my background. That's what I'm exposed to all the time. But you can use that money for anything, to pay a cell phone bill, whatever. This, These are the savings that you're getting by using these tablets, okay? And the only thing better than saving money at the pump is earning money when your friends fuel up at the pump as well, okay? So it costs nothing extra to become a promoter. All you got to do is click the box um, towards the end of the process when you when you go to subscribe to receive this product on a monthly basis. And uh, you'll get your own personal link and their back office software is absolutely amazing. 
is so user friendly. So you don't have to be an expert or anything. You just share your link with people and you get paid and everyone saves. It's a literally a no brainer. 